had a request come in to scrape the New York City ACRIS, A-C-R-I-S, yeah, Automated System Register Information System, just uh, has a lot of their city, county data. And what we are particularly after is the federal lien IRS documents for New York City. So this is, yeah, Department of Finance, all boroughs, and we're just going to go search here. So we want all of this information, Max Rose 99, as well as, you know, if you click into the detail and get all of this detailed information. So, well, let's go back first. So in order to do this, yeah, you're going to inspect and then see what happens when we do, when we click search, boom. So it looks like it is server rendered because if you do fetch, so it renders just a new page. So it's gonna be server rendered. So this is the thing that we're after and it looks like, thank goodness, like it's all very readable what the parameters are. So this all boroughs. Yeah, we actually want 99, but we'll change that. And then, yeah, this is the doc type. So those are, and it has a request verification token, which is, which is important. So we'll need that to make further requests. So if we want to copy that to actually call it from our server, then we just copy as node fetch. And then you're just going to paste it here. And then call that. So get IDs from search. So this doesn't return a whole lot yet. It'll just return the IDs, which I don't even know if it's that, but it's, so the ID is available here. Yeah, I guess I should go over that. So how to find the IDs. Uh, what did I search for here? Form data, table, T body, TR. Oh yeah, I think they make it even really nice too with the tables. Usually it's not this easy. Yeah, so these are the tables and then here, view detail, as you can see here in, they put it in an input or a button. So not exactly sure why. This, so then it says go to detail and then you can even get the image as well, but we just want the ID because that will take us here. So all we need to do to get the detail is go to this page and then append the ID and then we'll have, so for every ID, we just append, yeah, that ID and then it gets us all of that information. So you would just loop through and get, oops, this URL and append this ID, which I'll show you later. So yeah, to get all those rows, I'm using Cheerio and then just, yeah, form data, t, uh, table, t body, tr, whatever. And then they have a nice class detail and image button. And then just extracting like through with regex the IDs. And interestingly enough, these IDs are sequential. So the previous one, so this says two six, the previous one is two five, and then two four, two three. So not super secure in New York City. So you could just continually look, you could continually increment and see when you run out of them, you know, that's the end. So you wouldn't even necessarily need to come here and scrape all the search results every time because you know exactly what the IDs are going to be, but whatever. So yeah, you're going to get that. And then, so we need this request verification token and there's two of them actually. So one of them, and we can tell that this is an ASP.NET application because of this ASP.NET session ID. And Looks like they have a couple request verification tokens on the cookie. Not exactly sure why, but you're going to need request verification tokens in the cookie and in the body here for the, of the request. 
And the ASP session ID, it's a lot of times how ASP will keep track of your navigation where you're at in the nav, as well as just to know that you're like a, a real user or a registered user, or whatever. So to get those, you're going to need to use, so I use Puppeteer, you could use Selenium uh, and spoiler alert as well. It needs to be on a residential IP address. And so this is where I have my residential IP is I have this Lambda function, which I can show you here. So I have this Lambda function that I can invoke and then I just pass it a URL and then response type text with JS true, which means use puppeteer. And then it spits back the data as well as the cookies and the proxy index. So you're gonna to need to use puppeteer and all you need to do is go to this page here and just grab the, well, I guess we can just show it and just grab the cookie. So all you have to do is just hit the web page, then return back the HTML and the cookies, which you can both get from puppeteer because in any network request, it'll actually just give you back the cookies, which is awesome. So if you go to headers here, so this is the request headers. Anyway, you can get it. How do I get the cookies? Forget if, if it's the response or the request that you get. I'm pretty sure it's the response though will contain these cookies, which has the ver request verification token in the ASP.NET session ID. Right there, ASP.NET session ID as well as the request verification token. It looks like the second one as well. Now. What ASP.NET does in order to prevent scraping and using their APIs or their pages here, their, uh, their own endpoints, then they'll include this request verification or they'll, they'll include some sort of thing that they put on the input, on a hidden input to make sure you have to go through the browser to make this request. Now you could just use Puppeteer to make this, to, to fill all of this out, like select this and stuff, but I prefer to use their own endpoint because it's just easier to wait. You get the actual response and you just don't have to deal with as much. Like if this was much more complex, if we had to fill out more things, there's just more things to break. It's not as fast. Yeah. So I always, what I always do or try to do is here. So this is a form right here. So this is a form. So for these old school ASP.NET applications that were made like in the nineties or eighties or whatever, then they use forms on everything. And that will include an input, a hidden input with a request verification token. So like that's the name. So really easy to find. All you need to do is just search for that because that's that's what we saw in the the request that I was showing you earlier. And that'll just be, so if it has like this name here, all you do is just search for that in the HTML and then that will give you the value. So in Puppeteer, we're gonna request the HTML here and it's going to return us the request verification token. So all we have to do, and I'm gonna, here. So all we have to do is grab, and I use Cheerio to do that, the input with the name request verification token, get the value, and that's the token. And then we just pass that to this get IDs from search function. So we have the cookie and then pass in the token and the request verification token right there. And then to get the actual results, then we go to the detail and then we want to extract. So all we have to do there is just, yeah, copy as node fetch for this one. That's obviously the one we want, but if you want to double check that, yeah, preview right there response gets you everything there. So this is kind of a pain to filter out everything. Yeah, look at all that nasty. But yeah, then you just paste 
the node fetch here. And then you have to pass in the same token and cookies that you did previously, as well as I believe like on the same server, maybe. No, I don't think they need to be on the same server. So the document ID, like I showed you there, you're just going to loop through all of the options and then just pass in the ID and then it will return everything that you want. And then you have to JSONify it. So I use Cheerio for this. And then this is just kind of a pain in the butt work, grunt work to find everything. So this is kind of nice that they put it in a table. So you just extract that table and then use, I use all of these as the, uh, the keys. And then this is the values. And then I have to extract this as well. But yeah, you just use Cheerio, pretty easy. It's just a pain, well, it's not easy, it's simple. It's just a pain in the butt. And that's basically it. So then if we run this, uh, so sometimes the residential IP uh, isn't that great. I use storm proxies and frequently they don't work because I'm just using five of them, but boom, worked right there. You get all the data, took nine seconds, a little bit long, but because my proxies don't work, my residential proxies don't work that well. But yeah, they're very cheap though. So yeah, that's it. So then we have all of this data here. If we go to our CSV, which is, yeah, I guess I already had that up. Then it's all here. We have document ID, number of pages, stock type, assessment date, remove or recorded doc date, amount, borough, party name, address, and then party two address. And if this is what people, oh, this is insane, three hundred thousand dollars. So that's how you scrape New York City's AC IRS AC. RIS.